Is. <laughs> All new at 4.30. It's a question many parents run into this time of year. Is my child too sick to go to school? Coronavirus and cold and flu season can make that very tough. And with some guidance on making that decision, we are talking to Keith Grant, an APRN and Senior System Director of Infection Prevention at Hartford HealthCare. Mr. Grant, thank you so much for being with us as always. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. So this has been a difficult decision for moms and dads for hundreds of years, literally. Yes, now, exactly. Now, add in the coronavirus, and this gets so much more complicated. So for all the parents, grandparents watching right now, what signs or symptoms should you be looking out for to keep your child at home for the day? Right, so I'll put a quick disclaimer in, in saying that what I'm going to say might not change much of the confusion itself. And the reasons why is, for a common cold, for influenza, and for COVID-19, the symptoms are very, very similar. I think at this point in time, one of the things that you need to be most cautious with is if someone does have symptoms, have them separate or isolate from your normal community, uh, especially for individuals who are high risk. We've seen most breakthrough cases and most positive cases right now are individuals over 65 with comorbidities. But with COVID-19, you know, one of the symptoms that is is, un, is different from all the from flu and from uh, common cold is a most likely a loss of taste and smell, and normally that's indicate indicative at this point of COVID-19. All right. Are there any symptoms where you know this is maybe an ear infection or or something else where you know okay i can say send my child to school and they won't infect anyone and this is okay you know it's that's a very good question very difficult difficult question to answer without on every every child from an individual basis right so a child who have you know history of ear infection obviously from a differential perspective you really want to look at that. Is this really still an ear infection? From an individual, have a, a lot of patients talk about seasonal allergies as well. Um, is this, does this feel like my normal symptoms that I have when my seasonal allergies are acting up? So these are like individual questions that needs to be had. Um, I think generally it's difficult at this point in time. And I think if you do have symptoms, um, you should, I will encourage, especially symptoms that sustain, that you get tested as soon as possible and uh, stay away from your community and make sure you wear a mask if you need to. Um, but I'm very challenging. COVID just complicated it as much as possible. Absolutely, in, in so many ways. I wanted to bring Absolutely. up the testing component that you just talked about. You start to feel a little crazy when anytime they get a sniffle as a parent, you're calling the pediatrician and saying, hey, can I get my child tested again? So. Where do you draw the line? Do they get tested every time, you know, they cough or have a runny nose? Because, you know, young kids, that's just basically uh, par for the course. Absolutely. And I think you bring up a very, very good point, very important point. I think if you have questions, reach out to your PCP, and that might include your pediatrician. And your pediatrician will do exactly what we just talked about. Have that individual conversation, right? If you do have any questions about it, absolutely reach out to your PCP. Should you be reaching out every time your kid has what you think is a common cold? I think parents kind of have an inkling. They have an idea. Um, I have a two-year-old now that who has started daycare, and I can tell you, you know, I just had a discussion with one of my chiefs in that I feel like I have to test myself every single day because this kid has a runny nose every day. And um, even in my current role, that's a difficult decision. So I understand the difficulties on parents. But whenever it comes up, whenever there's symptoms, I would possibly – um, reach out to your pediatrician and have that discussion. And frankly, sometimes you just don't know. My daughter last year was two years old and really didn't have many symptoms. And unfortunately, we tested her and it turned out that she had COVID. So I think that's what mm -hmm. makes everything confusing is that sometimes you just don't know. The one point I also wanted to bring up with you uh, before you go is the screen and stay program that was implemented uh, earlier in the month of November by the governor, meaning that if someone in a child's class test positive for the coronavirus, the other students who were maybe in close proximity can still stay in the class as long as they're screening every day for the potential symptoms. Parents are being called and told you can keep your children home or you can keep them in school with the, the stay and screen program. What do you recommend to parents? Because this is a kind of a, a hard decision to make. 
Absolutely. And I'll tell you why this program is important and why we're able to make this recommendation. So what we found was, you know, kids and mass compliance is very, very good in schools, especially in Connecticut, um, very exceptionally good. In fact, data came out of Massachusetts very soon in the pandemic that showed the six feet distance might not be needed in schools because kids are so good with masking. And that's the only reason we can use or we can advise that you do a uh, screen and stay program in, in schools. Should you keep your child home if they've been exposed, knowing that the masking process in schools are really good? It seems to be very good in that there's significant reduction in transmission. There's no hotspots or clusters that has, that's happened in Connecticut so far, which is really good. Um, I think it's an open decision in that I'm okay with saying it's good to bring have your child go back to school, especially if they have absolutely no symptoms and if you've tested them and they're negative. Um, having them home is a personal preference, but I think it's safe to keep them in school. All right. Well, thank you for helping sort this all out for us. I think the kids are better than we are sometimes with the masks, so that is a good thing. Keith Grant with Hartford Healthcare. As always, we appreciate your time and appreciate you being with us. Absolutely. Have a good day. You too.